There are some animated films where you just hear the title and already know exactly what it's about, and you almost can't believe that such a movie exists. And that's certainly the case with Rover Dangerfield. You hear the name and you think, wait, is that a movie about a dog who acts like Ronnie Dangerfield? And you would be absolutely correct. However, it's actually pretty good, and while it's slipped into obscurity, it's probably one of the best things Dangerfield attached his name to. Originally conceived by Harold Ramis, Ronnie Dangerfield took the idea to Hyperion Pictures, who had recently jumped into the animation scene with The Brave Little Toaster. With a distribution deal signed with Warner Brothers, they got to work on this little project. Rodney Dangerfield was very heavily involved with the film, serving as not only its lead voice and the main inspiration for the title character, but it also wrote the screenplay, produced the film, and penned the songs. Not surprisingly, Rover spouts a lot of his signature one-liners, and your enjoyment of the film depends on how much you find them funny. Personally, I think Dangerfield did a very good job of adapting his comedy to the animation format, and also making his quips appropriate for the family crowd. He's also able to make Rover a likable present, who I don't mind spending time with throughout the course of the film. The animators, particularly the film's directors, James George and Bob Seeley, also deserve plenty of the credit for the look of the picture. The more physical gags succeed at being funny, and the dark moments don't feel too out of place. While it's certainly a macabre gag, I cannot help but find the scene of Rover trying to revive a shocked turkey to be the funniest in the movie. There's a warmness to the background art, and each animal looks distinct and unique. There was likely a challenge of transferring Dangerfield recognizable looks to a cartoon dog, but the designers did a more than decent job of doing that. Throw in the strong animation, and it becomes a bigger shame that Hyperion did not last very long in that arena. Looking over the end credits, it's not too surprising Rover Dangerfield was high quality on the animation front, as notable names like Bruce W. Smith, Matthew Callahan, Kevin Lima, and Franz Vischer had a hand in it. Meanwhile, the story has an underlying sweetness to it. We get a real sense of the relationship between Rover and his owner, and there are multiple touching scenes when he's on the farm. His romance with Daisy is well developed and very sweet, and while it's a cliched story to have the attractive female lead fall for the chubby underdog, in this case, it actually works due to the likability that Rover brings to it. Not to mention, Daisy does calm out at times when he gets a little too joke-heavy. The movie also knows when to slow down and focus more on the characters than the comedy. A lot of the film is actually little character-building moments, as we see Rover getting used to life on the farm and interacting with the other animals trying to adjust to it. The script takes the typical city boy in the country plot and does some clever things with it. And it never forgets that the lead character is a dog, thus we get some humor scenes of him alternating between typical dog activities and then questioning them. Like a lot of animated films at the time, this is a musical. While none of the songs are necessarily Disney caliber, there's still a hummable quality to them. And in fitting with Rover being a Las Vegas raised dog, there's a crooner-like feel to them and the way Dangerfield performs them. The opening number already begins Rover Dangerfield with a bang with It's a Dog's Life, a very spirited and incredibly catchy song with Rover singing about how much he loves his current life. I'm in love with the dog next door is very heartfelt and nicely describes the relationship between Rover and Daisy. You can tell that the song really came from the heart when he wrote it. And then there's maybe the most infamous tune in Rover Dangerfield, I'll Never Do It on a Christmas Tree. On the surface, it seems like a crude song about a dog not wanting to urinate on a tree. However, I think looking underneath, it's more a song showing Rover's respect for the holidays and people's happiness during that time. The humor in this song will not appeal to everyone, but I get a laugh out of it, and I also understand where Dangerfield was going with it. So with the pedigree involved, do you think Warner Brothers would have given it a decent push? Not really. They actually dumped the thing and gave it such a limited release, it might as well be called a direct-to-video movie. And that's a shame, because it deserved a much better treatment. While it gained a small viewership on video and occasional television airings, Rover Dangerfield has still remained mostly in obscurity. It's such a forgotten title, it was not released on DVD until 2010, and even then, it was only via the Warner Archive collection. 
Robert Dangerfield may not be a popular and widely seen animated feature, but it's got a real heart and humor to it, and a solid showcase for not only Ronnie Dangerfield's talents, but also the great animators and artists who worked on it. See you next time.